Hello, everyone. Um, as he said, I am Benjamin Ostermeyer, and I'm here with my colleague Katie Knowles, Catherine Knowles. <laughs> um, we are both uh, work at the Iris Digital Humanities Center at SIUE, and today we'll be talking about um, our work with community engagement. Southern Illinois University Edwardsville's Interdisciplinary Research and Informatics Scholarship Center, or IRIS, was founded in 2009 by co-directors Drs. Jessica Despain and Christine Hildebrandt, is an interdisciplinary facility designed to support individual and collaborative scholarship at faculty and student levels that applies digital content as a primary methodology. Over most of the last decade, IRIS has been a pioneer in modeling how a regional university can produce revolutionary digital humanities scholarship. Not only does IRIS work to cultivate a community of digital humanities scholars at SAUE and support faculty-led digital humanities research, but we also emphasize the importance of providing students with training in digital humanities skills through collaborative work. When working with any community, we facilitate training and program activities in a way that gives participants agency and, by extension, greater ownership over the projects they create. Our goal is to address and attempt to remedy concerns of the digital divide manifested as a lack of access, training, and engagement to particular student populations, including African American and first generation college students. SAUE is a public four year regional university founded in 1957. It awards degrees in 48 undergraduate programs and 67 graduate and professional practice programs. While SAUE is in Edwardsville, one of the wealthiest communities in the area, the Brado Metro East region, which is located in Edwardsville across the Mississippi River from St. Louis, Missouri, is also home to areas dealing with declining industries and falling populations. Both rural and urban communities are underserved and underrepresented. Many, many SAUE students come from these or similar communities, with more than 60% being first generation college students. Of the 13,796 students enrolled in the fall 2017 semester, 84% of students came from Illinois. And of those students, 45% came from Madison County, where SAUE is located, or the adjacent St. Clair County. Because so many of our students are close to home, it presents a unique opportunity for faculty and staff to build projects that aim to address themes that manifest themselves as common problems throughout the cities and townships in the area. SIUE students from underserved communities, oh sorry, <laughs> are more likely to have limited access to the internet, making it more difficult for them to participate in digital humanities scholarship. In order for IRIS to address this problem, it had to overcome SIUE's institutional digital divide that manifested as a result of the limited resources available at a regional university. Hildebrandt and Despain argue in their special issue of Polymath, the digital divide isn't just experienced by students. The concentration of informatics scholarship at research universities has cordoned off access to the scholarly practice so that it may be difficult for some scholars to establish or maintain a foothold in the field. At these teaching intensive universities, bringing faculty and students together may be the best method for addressing this digital divide. Consequently, faculty invite students to work on their digital research projects as collaborators. In these projects, the process is just as value as the product encouraging students to leave their comfort zone, experiment, and take risks. Not only do students learn digital tools, IRIS faculty deliberately involve them in the research, planning, and design of the project. As a result, students see themselves not just as consumers of digital media, but as creators that can shape it. Okay. Nearly every IRIS faculty project involves students in some form of this model. Recruiting, in most cases, is done through professors reaching out to students in their classes. In identifying good candidates, professors do not consider their technical experience. Instead, they select students whose interests best match their project. Therefore, students usually come to projects passionate about the topic, but without experience using digital methods. And their drive motivates them to learn. For example, in the Wide Wide World Digital Edition, an archive of transatlantic reprints of one novel, students feel more free to take risks and experiment because they do not have the pressure of earning a grade. Although students are not graded on their performance, faculty still have to ensure students are working on the project and not abandoning it for other responsibilities. Rather than resorting to disciplinary action, IRIS faculty have found convincing students of, their va of the value of their work is more effective. In addition to having the project reflect their interests, treating students as research colleagues instills them with confidence and increases dedication to their work. Students develop their own expertise in a wide range of digital skills, allowing them to assist in teaching new participants. Some projects, such as Manong Languages, a digital atlas of endangered languages in Nepal, and Madison Historical, 
a local history encyclopedia and archive, have given undergraduate and graduate co undergraduate students co-authorship on journal publications. Participants in IRIS do not just learn digital humanities methodology. They learn to collaborate with both fellow students and faculty. Despite its foundations in cultivating faculty-student relationships within the university, IRIS now collaborates actively with K-12 teachers and school districts regularly. In these partnerships, there are many variables that need to be considered such as obtaining buy-in from administration and teachers, transporting students for after-school programs, funding teacher stipends, and developing curriculum compatible with various forms of student assessment. If the digital project is part of an after-school program, students also need to be interested. Therefore, the project is heavily influenced by the need to engage students as active participants. With both undergraduates and students in middle and high school, we have found that creating an environment where the work time is also an opportunity where peer social engagement can make a difference in regular attendance as well as the quality of student work. Iris's first foray into dealing with middle schools with the Digital East St. Louis Project, a collaboration between SAOE STEM Center and Iris. Beginning in 2014, this project developed a summer and Saturday program for East St. Louis middle school students to create a website about the history and culture of their city. Participants learned oral history recording, audio and video editing, metadata writing, and GIS in order to create projects that present an alternative point of view than that of East St. Louis as a city suffering from low incomes and high crime rates. To recruit teachers, students and local partners, staff and staff participate in meetings, open houses, and presentations at the local middle school and community organizations. After the recruitment process, clear communication between involved parties must exist to make a program successful. A recent offshoot of Digital East St. Louis, a collaboration with the Manny Jackson Center for the Humanities as part of their STEM Meets Humanities initiative, involves middle and high school students from Madison and Venice, Illinois, and after school digital humanities clubs. The clubs use place-based themes to engage African American students in the production of digital projects and encourage them to pursue STEM fields through their interest in humanities content. A recurring problem with the clubs is lack of communication between schools, the faculty, and the undergraduate scholars who run them. The clubs compete with the excitement of other after-school events, including sports, resulting in wavering attendance. While this is not unexpected, project staff sometimes arrive to an empty classroom. For the first time, IRIS relies heavily on a third-party mediator in the form of MJCH's STEM Meets Humanities program manager to coordinate with district administrators. Our rather unconventional partnership with the Manny Jackson Center for the Humanities began in 2016 as part of the Conversation Toward a Brighter Future initiative. Since MJCH's values are more rooted in humanitarianism rather than the academic study of the humanities, they reached out to us to collaborate on projects that would bring meaningful humanities curricula and activities to local school districts and the residents of Madison County. We were challenged to translate our experience in creating programs with a scholarly audience into building projects that appeal to all ages focused on what it truly means to participate in publicly engaged digital humanities. In addition to the digital humanities clubs, IRIS expanded MJCH's Conversation Toward a Brighter Future program with a recently funded NEH Humanities Access Project that aims to mitigate intergenerational conflict by studying concepts of aging and life courses alongside social and cultural narratives on these topics. Students will participate in the program through two main components, the in-school curriculum and an after-school digital storytelling studio. Teachers were hesitant to incorporate new content into their lesson plans, so we assembled a team of curriculum coordinators that represent each district's interests and gives all teachers access to digital humanities training. While this program is a priority of MJCH, we recognize that it is not the, necessarily the main focus for participating schools. Thus, we have met with teachers and administrators individually to discuss how project curriculum and the digital storytelling studios fit into their schedules and how we can ensure all students have access to the same resources through the project, regardless of a district's individual access to technology. <clears throat> Excuse me. Iris projects, particularly Madison Historical, have also collaborated with local heritage institutions such as museums and libraries. This project borrows the collections of these institutions and shares them via a digital archive. Organizations are understandably protective of their archival collections, especially where digitization is concerned. We created a variety of strategies to ensure best results for both parties. We clearly communicate our goals and plans. We assure them we do not seek to replace the role of, the inst of their institution in the community, but instead we give credit and refer people from our website to their institution. Also, if we digitize materials on SAOE's campus, we explain what that process would look like. 
If the resources are not already digital, we provide them with a digital copy. Still, not every institution is comfortable sending the materials to SAOE to be digitized. In one case, representatives from an institution visited IRIS to inspect equipment, equipment to ensure the safety of their artifacts. Additionally, we purchased a mobile scanner to use at institutions so materials do not have to be transported. These adjustments require flexibility and working with the institution to develop alternatives. There are clear distinctions in ways we engage with these public institutions through digital humanities research. While each relationship is unique and requires extremely nuanced communication throughout the course of collaborative work, it is in stark contrast to how Irish faculty and scholars engage with communities abroad. Co-director Hildebrandt's work with endangered languages in Nepal requires a different approach to community engagement. She works in the Kathmandu region and faces technology obstacles greater than those in disadvantaged local neighborhoods. Oftentimes there's no electricity, internet, or cell phone reception, and these challenges reshape the meaning of community collaboration. Hildebrandt's NSF-funded Manang Languages Project, running from 2012 to 2018, has involved diverse populations, ranging from professors at higher education institutions to community leaders and educators at all levels of data collection and analysis to document the endangered languages of the Manang region. They work side by side to cultivate an interpersonal network to facilitate the construction of an online, interactive, multimedia, atlas, and archive. Most team members spent time in the field going to local villages to meet with community members and leaders to decide who to interview. For the Nepal Earthquakes Project, Hildebrandt was awarded funding through NSF's RAPID program to capture the stories of survivors of the 2015 earthquakes, some of whom spoke languages that had only 200 or fewer remaining speakers. Due to the time-sensitive nature of the project, Hildebrandt and her team hired 16 researchers native to the region, coordinated a day of digital skills training, distributed necessary equipment, and sent them into the field. This time, who to interview and what kinds of data to gather was left in the hands of the field researchers. In both projects, once SAOE faculty and students returned home, scholars from universities in Nepal work with contracted native speakers to continue day-to-day -day operations. Data is then passed on to Hildebrandt's team in the US, often by Dropbox or even hand-delivered USB drive, to be analyzed, translated, and interpreted. While IRIS has a broad history of digital community engagement, we recognize that there are specific areas in which we can improve. We try to be conscious of the insensitivity and lack of reciprocity that occurs when projects treat a community as a laboratory for a brief period of time then leave without making a lasting impact. Currently, IRIS is taking steps in fortifying a lasting partnership with East St. Louis residents by creating an infrastructure to make IRIS a consistent and reciprocal partner. The university has a higher education campus in East St. Louis, which includes a Head Start program, a charter high school, and Upward Bound, but there is no direct path for these students to continue into a college education at SIUE. Our next major initiative is the Digital Community Engagement Pathway that will encourage students to take their education outside the walls of the classroom and into the community. The pathway will directly recruit underserved students from the Metro East region and will use a research team model to partner with community organizations in addressing major social problems, such as food insecurity and helping immigrant communities form a sense of belonging through the use of digital humanities methods. Regardless of the specific project, IRIS aims to provide people the opportunity to use digital humanities methods to not only contribute to academic research, but to also have their own voices heard regarding issues that directly affect their communities. Thank you.